What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. I'm going to jump straight into the topic today. I'm super excited about it and I promise you if you do follow the steps of this blueprint I'm about to give you, you'll be very, very happy. If this is your first time visiting this channel, welcome. My name is Reggie Bryant. I cover personal finance and personal growth topics on this channel so you can live the life you've always wanted. I'm a little congested today, you know what I'm saying, but it's all good. The show must go on. Anyway, if you haven't already, follow me on Instagram. I'll have the link in the description. I'm actually posting there now. <laughs> Look, I used to not post anything up there and wonder why I'm not getting any followers. No idea. Also, on my Patreon, I'm now posting twice a week. I was slacking at first. I just kind of released it. Didn't really post that much. Now I'm doing twice a week. Dedicated, so make sure you check that out too. All right, so let's jump right into the topic for today. This money advice is cold. I really don't know how else to say it, and it really does have a life-changing impact behind it. So uh, just make sure you take notes and pay close attention because I can guarantee you most people are not doing any of this, and this will put you light years ahead of where you would be and if you didn't follow this advice. So the first tip I'm gonna give you is get your life together. That should be your first financial goal ever. I mean, between the ages of 18 and let's say 25, that's when you really want to aim to get it. Most people don't hit it at 25. It's more, you know, 30 to 35, but you want to aim between the ages of 18 to 25 to get your life together. But the biggest problem I have with the saying, get your life together is it's kind of arbitrary. It's something that most of us have a different idea of what it actually means. And one of my biggest goals is to kind of seal that gap. And I just look at what the biggest problems are, where most people are lacking financially. And that's how I came up with what I think is having your life together. So what do I mean by get your life together? I mean, there's a few things you have to get done early on in life, like done as if they're a priority. I mean, these are boxes you got to get checked off early, early on in life. Because these are going to be the basic things you need to have a peace of mind and for basic survival. And let me tell you guys something. You know how many times I've heard throughout my life just overhearing conversations when people say things like, Oh, well, such and such, she doesn't have her life together yet. I don't, I don't know what she's going to do. She's just so lost. She doesn't know where she wants to go to school. She doesn't know what she wants to major in. She doesn't know what she wants to do for a living. What I'm saying is most of the time I hear it in terms of like education. And that's not what I'm here to talk about today. I'm not here to talk about education. But the correlation I do see with what everyone says when can, and can agree with when they talk about someone who doesn't have their life together is that their priorities aren't straight. That's why you might hear people talk about celebrities who are multi-multi-millionaires that get into trouble saying, yep, they just don't, they don't have their life together. Like monetarily they do, but they keep getting in trouble with drugs and with crime and things of that nature, right? So it, it all comes back to not having your priorities straight. And there's five priorities that you should have when it comes to getting your life together that once you have all five of these straightened out and they're all good to go, you don't have to worry about much. So the first thing is focusing on having a career. And I'm going to define what a career is because I think a lot of folks get it mixed up. Like just because you have a job does not mean you have a career. We, gotta, we have to set that record straight right now. I'm not talking about just any old job anywhere. Like, I mean a career, like the definition of a career is one, something that pays you consistently, but two, something that you have growth in, like into the future, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 25 years from now, you have growth, which not only means you get that future development as a person, as a man or as a woman, but your pay also goes up, which is what we want. Now, now let me put this out there. Sometimes we have to work certain jobs that we don't want to work to as we pursue the career that we want. For example, when I was in college, as I was pursuing a career as an engineer, I was, I was stocking shelves at the grocery store. There's nothing wrong with that. But I understood back then, stocking shelves, that's not my career. This is something I'm doing temporarily while I pursue my career. We have to be real with ourselves and understand what are careers and what are not careers. Like, think about it. If, if you know that you're working the register at McDonald's or Walmart or Target or something like that, or if you're stocking shelves, if you're cleaning floors, like, think about this. That's part-time work. Most workers who do those types of jobs do not work 40 hours a week. It's more like 18 to 20 hours a week. Sometimes those hours get cut. So tell me this, if, you work in, if you're working a job where the hours get cut sporadically and you don't really know if you're working this week or not, 
you don't see any long-term growth. If you're only getting $200 every other week, full-time work has a potential to make that in like a day, some half a day. And it doesn't necessarily have to be you working for someone else. Like some people are business owners. Some people are self-employed. Like think about this. We have actors out here like Leonardo DiCaprio, Scarlett Johansson. They have careers. They're actors. Do they have side income? Probably. But the, the basic idea is they have careers. They still have growth in the future. Think about Robert Kiyosaki. He's an entrepreneur. His career path has growth just as an entrepreneur. But most of us are going to have a career in terms of working for a big business working for a big business. It could be for a big bank. It could be for Tesla. It could be for Ford. It could be a bunch of different places. It could be for a hospital. It doesn't really matter where you decide to do your career, but it's on you to do that due diligence to know if there's going to be a demand and a market for your skill set in the future. And that'll help you figure out whether you're on the right track or not when you're making your decision about your future career. Now, this might take a little bit of time. You might need a trade. You might need a two-year degree, four-year degree but you just have to have that long-term mindset. And that's the biggest thing you wanna get checked off early because of how long it can potentially take. And as you look into getting your career, be realistic about how much you're gonna make per year fresh out of the gate. And then look at how much you're gonna make in the future after having that career for a few years. It's gonna give you steady income, it's gonna be reliable. You're gonna feel confident about yourself because you're part of something that's bigger than yourself. And you'll be able to provide for yourself and others. All right, so next, you got to live below your means. And I know some, some people like think that means you got to live off of ramen noodles and like tap water, but that's not what I mean by that. What I simply mean is you want to spend less money than you're making. Not as much money as you're making and not more than you're making, but you want to spend less money than you're making. And I'm going to paint a picture for you real quick. So let's say you're making $75,000 a year and you have a choice between an $1,000 a month apartment, $1,400 a month apartment, and then like a $2,500 a month apartment. It's definitely gonna depend on how the apartments look on the in and outside, but a lot of people who make 75,000 a year, that's a good amount of money for most areas, right? Good rule of thumb is this, your rent or however much your place costs, they should not add up to more than 30% of your monthly paycheck. So that automatically disqualifies the 2,500. So now you're really only looking at the $1,000 a month and the $1,400 a month. But see, most most people, they wouldn't have even, they wouldn't have taken the 2,500 one out. See now most people, they would have seen that, they would be like, well no, because technically I get bonuses twice a year and I'm making 75, so that means I'll technically be making like 82, 83. So let me push let me push the envelope a little bit. Let me go ahead and get that nicer place. And look, I understand, like I, I think having the finer things in life is very important, but I also think you have to earn your way there. I don't think that liking the finer things in life or believing that you deserve the finer things in life or necessarily earning it. You know what I mean? So let me break down the math for you. $75,000, I'm doing this right now on my phone. $75,000 divided by 12. 62.50 a month, right? Times 0.3, 18.75. So really you can only choose 1,000 or 1,400. And technically you can choose either one of them, right? Obviously if you choose the 1,000, you know, you're gonna be saving quite a bit more money. But let's say it's in an unsafe area, you don't feel comfortable, like sure it's a pretty nice apartment, but you might feel a little skeptical. You might be a little uncomfortable. You might be like, ah, uh, that complex is pretty nice, but they get into a lot of trouble over there, man. I, uh, sirens over there every night. Like, I don't know. I hear about break-ins over there. I don't want to deal with it. Cool. Go for the 1400 one. But here's the part that I conveniently left out. You're not actually making $75,000 a year. Not even if you include your bonuses, and here's why. It's because of the simple fact that we haven't taken taxes out yet. <clears throat> So let's say you're getting taxed 22% per year and you don't have state taxes, it's just federal tax we're talking about. So that means if you make $75,000 a year, that's minus 16,500 off the top, which means you're only taking home 58,500 of that 75 per year. So now let's divide that by 12 and then times 
6.3, which is 30%. So now that's 14.62. So you definitely can still afford the $1,400 apartment. But what you do have to think and read and actually consider is is this rent gonna go up? The answer is yes, by the way. It's definitely gonna go up. It's probably gonna be up to 1500 or at least 1470 the next year. But you, you then have time to actually think through your budget and think through everything else. So the 1400 one, if that's the one you wanna pick, if that's your top pick, you know you, you want the 2500 one, but you know for a fact you can't afford it based off of the math I just broke down. You're like, you know what? Let me chill out with that. Let me deal with the 1400 one. Smart choice because your rent should not exceed 30% of your salary. And then I didn't include the bonus in here. So let's say you, you get a bonus. Hey, that's more added on top. But I want, I like to tell people to pretend like their bonuses don't even exist. That way when they get them, they can just throw them in their savings account or investments or whatever and call it a day. That's what's gonna make you more wealthy in the future. So that's a perfect example of living below your means, really assessing the numbers behind what you do on a daily weekly monthly basis like you pay rent every month right so you need to assess those decisions very thoroughly like i just went over just so you can understand how much it's going to impact your pockets in the future you can also plug and play different scenarios like going out to eat and stuff like you might understand you know based off of these numbers i don't need to be going out to eat three four times a week i can i can do once a week and call it a day. You don't have to buy all these things just to make yourself happy temporarily or to impress people that don't even really matter. You know what I'm saying? Like you want to make smart decisions up front and then in the future you'll have that money in excess to do whatever you want with. So that's the idea behind getting your life together. But anyway, I'm going to get to my next point. I already said the getting your own apartment and all that stuff and having the numbers right. So part of having your life together is having your own place and having your own form of transportation. So if you're working a career, and you're saving up and you haven't gotten transportation yet, make sure that's what you save up for. Make sure that's one of the first things that you buy out the gate once you get your career, or even if you're just working a job, pursuing a career, make sure when you save your money up, one of the first things you need to buy is a car, a reliable, safe vehicle of some sort. I'd recommend the car, like an economy car, because they're not gonna eat up gas, and gas is high right now. Now, I do understand there are some places like New York, uh, Philly, a lot of those places aren't gonna necessarily require that you have a car. In that case, you are still financially responsible for your transportation, whether that's taking like a bus, you know, a subway, whatever the case is. But these are all examples of getting your life together. Moving on. So on top of that, you wanna take care of yourself physically. That means regular dental visits, regular checkups at the doctor's office, all these things like that, right? You want to make sure you have insurance for this stuff. You want to have car insurance. You want to have health insurance. You want to have dental insurance. If you if you really take step number one of getting your life together to heart and you really understand how important it is, health and dental insurance is going to be knocked out for you anyway because your career is going to take care of that for you. And if you have a car, you better have car insurance. Just about every state requires that you have one. Plus, it's in your best interest to have anyway in case something happens. Okay. Moving on, no high interest debt. And I'm mainly talking about credit cards right here. And for me, I'm not one of those guys who's gonna sit here and tell you that credit cards are bad and don't use credit cards. I think that is horrible advice. I think credit cards can really benefit you if you use them correctly. But what I'm here to tell you today is, do not get yourself into more credit card debt than you can pay off. Because that interest rate will eat you alive. I'm talking 17%, 24% and up. Like. If you mess around and don't pay, or if you just pay the minimum payments every month, you have like, let's say 2,000, 3,000 on that credit card and you can't pay it down fast enough, it's just gonna keep growing and growing and you don't, you don't want that life, I'm telling you. If you pay like $25 on that or 35 or even $75 on that, it's not gonna shrink fast enough, it's gonna just keep growing. You ain't gonna know how to act. And it's not like you're gonna get ding, ding, ding notifications. Your credit's growing like, nah. It's just gonna silently grow. You'll be moving on with your life, doing, going about your everyday, you know what I'm saying, activities. And so will your credit card debt. It's gonna be growing. That's the daily activity. Just, that's what it's gonna be doing. Now, 
if you're in a different form of debt, like let's say student loan debt, because you decided that you wanted to pursue a career and you wanted to go to college and get a degree to pursue that career, that makes sense. So I'm not gonna sit here and say your life isn't together if you have like uh, student loan debt, because that definitely takes longer to pay off. Like it's more money. We're talking maybe $25,000 and up. Of course, it can be more or less, but we'll just say $25,000 and up. I think the average right now is like 30 something thousand. But those interest rates are very, very small. They can be like 3%, 5%. I think the highest I've seen is like 5.4%. But you can set up a plan and pay it and pay that off in like 10 years and even less if you really, really, really wanted to. Now with credit cards, you, you can't be fooling around with that. You can't be lollygagging with that. You gotta pay that off immediately. That's why if that's why I recommend if you use a credit card, pay it off as soon as you can, preferably within that same month. And that's why it always goes back to living below your means. Because sometimes people get into credit card debt because they have to use their credit card to afford survival, basically. And that's a very sad situation to be in. And so to be a little proactive about that, you wanna put yourself in a position to where you never have to rely on your credit card. Which brings me to my final point of getting your life together. Having a solid savings. What I mean by that, I'll tell you what I mean by that. What I mean by that is having solid saving habits in the first place. And if you live below your means, you can do just that. Because what I first talked about was having, making sure your rent should be 30% or less, cool. What about the other 70%? That is in your hands. To me, saving is a necessity. So I would say anywhere between 20 and 40%, that needs to go to savings. Now I, now I do understand not everybody can do 20 to 40%. That's fine, do what you can. I would push you and really challenge you to do 10% and then see what you can do to get it up to 15% and then just go up gradually. But that's, that's the only way it's gonna work. If you just tell yourself, oh, well, I can't do 20%, so this this whole, all this advice that I'm getting that ain't gonna work because I can't do 20%, that, that's not the way to do it. But just for a good rule of thumb, you wanna have a nice cushion of a couple thousand dollars. I'm talking literally $2,000, just a cushion of that in your main account. And that's not including what's already in your checking account. This is just an excess $2,000. This is just the, this is that just in case type of money that, uh-oh, type of money. Like I just got a flat tire. I just got into a car accident. Uh, I just had to buy a last minute plane ticket because an emergency happened. That's the $2,000 I'm talking about. And you know, me personally, I don't like to add too much on that. Like once it gets to 2000, I just leave it. And then on top of that, whatever percentage you're giving a month, like from your paychecks or whatever the case is, whether it's 10, 15, 20, 40%, doesn't really matter. Make sure it's automatically going to a different savings account that you don't necessarily need access to, like quick access to, like you can wait two to three business days before money transfers over. Because what that's gonna do is, it's gonna build discipline and it'll have more of an out of sight, out of mind type of deal for you. And you want this money to add up to a few months worth of paychecks. I could tell you three to six months worth of expenses. I could tell you, you know what I'm saying, a year's worth of expenses. But a lot of us, out earn our expenses. So is it safer to save up paychecks worth of money or expenses? And this is gonna take a while to save up, like especially if you're saving a smaller percentage, it's gonna take a while to save up. But if you wanna know like, when can I stop focusing so heavily on saving money? That's when I would recommend, like you can, you can slow down some once you hit the four months worth of paychecks to six month worth of paychecks mark. So now there's no more confusion. Like this is what I mean by get your life together. I mean like really, really hone in on everything. Get your career, get your own place, your own car. Make sure you're living below your means. If you can, buy your car in cash. Get rid of any high interest debt. That way you can sleep at night knowing that you don't have any kind of debt to worry about as far as high interest. And on top of that, you have a good amount of savings that you're just sitting on, on top of that $2,000 that you have that's just chilling in your, in your main account. This is for your peace of mind. This is very, very, very basic stuff. Now, <clears throat> a lot of people haven't gotten to the point where they've gotten their lives together as far as I define it, but that's fine. No one's, this, this channel is about improving and getting to where you wanna be in life. So I'm not here saying anything negative to anybody that hasn't gotten there. Like if anything, I want this video to motivate you to go harder. 
And this formula is kind of designed to make you want to do more and more when it comes to saving because I would suspect as the years go on, you're probably going to get paid more, which would mean the money that you have to save is then going to increase. You get what I'm saying? Anyway, I got to chill out. I'm getting all fired. Let me move on to the next topic where this video ends up being like an hour long. So now let's move on to the second thing. And the first thing, if you didn't know, was get your life together. The second thing is dedicate every month to learning a new skill. And the reason I categorize this as financial advice is for a simple reason. This can only help you save more money or make more money in the long run. So let's say, for, and I actually like to mix these up between skills that can add on to my business or my career and things I just enjoy doing. So for example, uh, this month I might decide to focus in on cooking because I cook at home a lot. Like I always say, live below your means. If I'm going out to eat every single day, then that's definitely not living, uh, then that's not living below my means because I got that expensive taste, you know what I'm saying? So that's not gonna be living below my means. So I've more consistently started enjoying cooking at home. The reason I'm pointing over here is because my kitchen's over here. Anyway, the more I sharpen that skill of cooking, and learn how to cook new dishes, new dinners, new types of breakfasts, lunches, whatever the case is, the more I'm gonna to want to actually cook at home because in some cases, I can cook better than the food that I have when I eat out. Not all cases now, I ain't trying to, you know, hey, I'm just saying, sometimes the meals that I cook, the meals that you cook, might be better than the meals that they have for you when you go out to eat. So not only are you eating cheaper, but better. You get what I'm saying? That's just an example though. But other skills or skills that I'm super proud of that I actually really, really, really gained for the first time this year. And one of them was learning how to write a book. Not just how to write a book, how to format a book, how to edit a book, you know what I'm saying? How to market a book, all that stuff. How to make it flow, the stylistic version of it. And the reason I'm telling you this, because I remember making a video, I think last November, telling y'all that I might write a book this year. Ain't no might anymore. I wrote the book, it's done. It is done. All I'm doing right now is building up my popularity, building up my marketing team for the book, getting the, the first readers out there, making last minute changes and stuff. And the book is coming out. So be ready for it. And I'm gonna be a shameless plug real quick. This book, it's gonna help you do stuff like get your life together, but it's also gonna help with stuff that a lot of people just don't know how to do, like how to get that career, how to interview for jobs, how to properly look for your first place when you first get out on your own, how to assess the cost of living, how to invest in the easiest way that'll give you the highest return without you having to really think or do much of anything. It just gives a lot of content. It's like 190 pages at the time of this recording. I don't plan on adding anything else to it, but as of right now, it's 190 pages and I will be letting you guys know when it's out and I will be plastering it all over my YouTube page because I want you guys to see it. If you like this channel, you will really, really like that book. I put a bunch of energy, I put my heart and my soul into that book, no lie. Anyways, um, other examples of skills that I've learned this year was I learned how to mint NFTs. I've learned about cryptocurrency. I've learned more about stock investing, which I already felt like I was pretty knowledgeable on, but I just got even more knowledgeable because I feel like investing is so vast. You just got to keep going with that. And the more you learn and the more you apply what you learn, the better you're going to get. So that's just how I feel about it. And you can actually split this up pretty good. You can have six months dedicated to business types of things that can bring more money in for you. And then six things that you like doing. Like it's a, it's a healthy balance. Like life does not always have to be about grinding and working hard and sweating all the freaking time. You, you don't have to do all that. Like you could actually do stuff that you're passionate about. I just so happened to be passionate about writing books. But check this out. You could spend, you know, a few, you could spend this month learning how to code. You could spend next month building your own website because now you know how to code. You get what I'm saying? Or you could learn how to write a business plan. You can learn how to build a YouTube channel and build an audience. You can then make a Patreon page. By the way, I have one of those. I post twice a week up there. Go ahead and follow your boy. Five dollars for exclusive financial content that you will not get on this channel. Or you could you know, do stuff that you're passionate about. You can learn how to dance, how to draw, how to paint, how to edit videos. Really, you could just you could learn anything. But I, I think that was the biggest takeaway that I have for this year so far. Actually taking every month to deliberately learn a new skill or to sharpen an existing skill, game changer. I'm telling you right now. 
and it has helped me make and save more money. And just wait till my book comes out. You'll see. By the way, if you want to be part of the team that reviews the book, gets to their hands on the book first, gets to read it and see everything, just let me know. Email me or DM me on Instagram or something. I'll have all that linked down below. And remember, I am posting on Instagram now. It's, it's, it's time to get serious. I, I got to go harder. I fell off a little bit. Hey, it's, it's that's the stuff I have to get back up, baby. That's That's what it's all about. Hit me up if you want to be part of that project. And lastly, and I'll be super brief with this one because most of y'all were not interested in this topic, but I keep bringing it up because this is like a for sure way that you can make a lot of money in a pretty short amount of time. Take advantage of the fact that the market is bright red right now. Like almost every single stock is down. So I'll show you real quick. Do to do, do. Show you real quick. Most people freak out when the stock market looks like this. I get happy because I know I'm. I know what stocks to pick. I know how to make some money out of this. You know what I'm saying? So, Tesla, which is typically in the thousands, is now 728. I'm not mad at that price at all. I mean. Apple is at 142. I don't remember the last time I saw Apple at 142. All of these stocks right here, AMD, PayPal, and Square, these are both steals right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, people freak out when stocks drop, but like, in, in the stock market, I really do believe is gonna get a lot worse. Like right now, you know, you're seeing some kind of fluctuations or whatever, but they can go down a lot lower. Like, I think we are heading toward a recession. And if we are, it's probably going to get even more red, a lot more bloody in the stock market. So I think we should all take advantage of that and at least start to educate ourselves about stocks and, and understand how money is made. Because the common person is going to think, oh, OK, well, if I invest in Amazon right now, it might be worth 20 grand in like 30 years. You're thinking wrong about it, because if a stock is on a discount, like, for example, I just showed you Square. Square, when I first got into it, it was like in the 200s, right? Right now it's $75. So if I buy up like 10 of those, you know what I'm saying, or 20 or 30, I'm going to buy up a lot of them. I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't know how many. It's going to be a lot of them. And uh, they all go back up to 200. Your boy is going to have some money in his pocket. You get what I'm saying? And you will too. But what I'm saying is at least start educating yourself on stocks. I think I'm gonna put more stock content on my Patreon page because it doesn't get a lot of hype on my channel, at least not yet. But that's all I wanna say. Take advantage of a down market because when stuff like recessions or like when the pandemic first came about and stuff like that in 2020, stocks were all kinds of low. And if you were to put a bunch of money into like Apple or Microsoft or VOO, at that time, or NVIDIA at that time, you would have been knowing how to act. Same thing for cryptocurrency, it's crashing right now. I mean, really, if, if you're not gonna buy into it, that's fine, but at least educate yourself and understand like the real opportunities that lie right in front of us as far as investment opportunities because they can, they can do you a lot of good. Anyways, I've been rambling for long enough. That's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryans. This channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. So you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.